What's going on guys, it's Michael Pisco, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing some of your Christmas light Facebook ads. So I'm just gonna jump into the Facebook ads library and give some feedback on what I think they can do to improve their ads. So just to preface, at the end of the day, if you're getting good results with your Facebook ads, then don't change what you're doing. If anything, do more of it. All markets across the United States are a little different. Some are more sophisticated than others. Some have more advertisers and so more competition. And so some areas that are less sophisticated and have less competition, you can get by with something as simple as a plain picture like this and a short ad copy variation. In some markets, something like that will work really well because you don't have much competition. But in most markets, as the competition is increasing and there's more advertisers, creatives and copy like this just doesn't work anymore. You need something a little bit more engaging, more attractive. And so, like I said, if it's working for you, then keep running it. You should test out every variation you can. But if it's not working, then you need to try something new. So with this first one I'm checking out, like I said, it's pretty simple. Even the ad copy is only one sentence long, so it's very short. As you can see, this ad only went live to day. So at this point, they don't know if it works well or not. But if after running it for a few days or a week or so, if it's still working well, then just keep running it. Don't fix something that isn't broken. But if it doesn't work well, that's probably because it's not engaging enough. So I would suggest adding some text on the picture. The text should be pretty festive, maybe green and red letters, maybe add a picture of a Santa Claus or something to make it more festive. But on the image itself, you can have a call to action or you can have an offer that'll capture people's attention. If you're running ads and you get a lot of people outside of your service area, then this might be a good spot to actually call out your service area. So for example, you might add a section on the image with text that says New Jersey homeowners. So anyone outside of New Jersey doesn't engage with it. Or if you want to get more specific, you can say your county or even city, but you can add your call out there if you get a lot of leads outside of your service area and that will help mitigate that. I'd also change the button. So instead of saying sign up, if you have some type of offer, it should say get offer. If not, then just say get quote. All right. So I have a lot of feedback for this next image. First and foremost, it's running through, I'm assuming the business owner's name. You should never run your ads through your personal personal name, it should be by business. So it actually looks professional. In this case, it just ran by his name. So it looks a lot less professional. And on top of that, they're mentioning the price in the ad copy, which I think is a terrible idea. If you're playing the low ticket, high volume game, where you're just looking to do a lower price, but a ton of installs, as long as you're still profitable, you can include some type of starting price. But I definitely would recommend avoiding including your prices here. If you want to include a minimum, just because you don't want anyone that can't afford your services commenting, then I would recommend using that not in the ad copy itself, but in the lead form. As for the rest of the ad copy, it does a good job at explaining the service and what exactly you're providing, but I think it could be structured to look a lot better. So instead of the bullet point, I would just include an emoji just to make it more festive. It could be a star or even a Santa Claus, something like that, or a green check is what we would typically use. As for the words itself, I think this information is good, so you can definitely keep that, but I think it's also a little too bulky and there should be spacing between each line so it's not all on top of each other. Most people reading your ad copy are just going to skim through it. So something bulky like this is pretty hard to skim through, where something line by line like this is a little easier to skim through and get the important information out of it. So I would definitely add some lines in between sentences. And then I'd also remove some of these call to actions. You want to give them one clear call to action, tell them exactly how to request your services. In this case, they have someone to call, they have a website, and then they also have the call to action button. And then on the image itself, once again, it has a phone number, it has a website, also has a QR code. So we're looking at four different call to actions, which is a lot. Keep it simple. The person seeing the ad doesn't want to use too much brain capacity. If you're giving them four different options, then it's a little complicated. There's too much going on. Just give them one clear call to action so they know exactly what to do and you'll get a much better conversion that way. And then I'm not sure why you included the text Facebook marketplace. You can definitely remove that. I don't think that adds anything to your ad copy. If anything, I always recommend the last line of your ad copy should be the call to action. And if you have an offer, you should include the offer there. As for the image itself, like I said, too many call to action. So keep it simple and too much going on as well. You can barely see either of these houses in the image. So the image itself is already pretty small on their phone. And then you're taking an even smaller part of that image to actually show the house. It's going to be very hard for anybody to see either of these houses. And so they can't really get a good grasp on exactly what you're doing for them. And then all this text, while it's good information, that's what is in your ad copy. So it doesn't need to be on your creative again. It should be in your ad copy and just there. And then same thing about the call to action button. I would change it to get quote or get offer. This one's a video, so I'm gonna go ahead, play it, and we'll check it out. So the video is not terrible. First and foremost, I would switch the dimensions of it. Ideally, you want to take up as much of somebody's phone screen as possible. So a horizontal video like that is only taking up a small bit of their phone. If it was square or even a vertical taller video, 
then it's taking up even more of their phone, so more of their real estate. So I would change the dimensions of the video. But as for the video itself, my biggest feedback would be to make it quicker and more engaging, more fast paced. Most people scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, they're scrolling quickly, going from post to post, each one being super engaging, a ton going on. And then for them to scroll to this video and it's just very slow paced, very mellow. For the most part, this isn't meshing well with their feed. And because it's so slow in the beginning, they're just gonna scroll right past it. So that first two to three seconds, you want to be super engaged and capture their attention right away. Usually some type of funny or interesting hook is really good. If you can't do that, at least just show something a bit more fast paced to capture their attention and then retain it from there. As for the ad copy itself, number one is don't use hashtags. This will not change the results of the ads and it's kind of just taking up real estate. Same thing as I mentioned earlier about the ad copy being pretty bulky. I'd have each of these sentences be their own line so it's easier for someone to skim through it. And it looks like they are running an offer, which is great, but they should also include their call to action as the last line. So include the call to action and then I would just switch up the button as well. So instead of saying learn more, they can click get quote or get offer. Looks like these ads are from the same advertiser. So same thing as I mentioned earlier, your ad copies where a bulk of your tech should be talking about the service. That way your creative can be focused on showing the service and what you actually provide. So in this case, it's really fixated on the text. So I would change that to be more focused on the service at hand. This next ad, it looks like their verbiage is actually really good. But once again, it's not very engaging, not very attractive. So I would add multiple lines. I would add some emojis in front of those lines. And that just makes it more festive and more engaging. And then I would also simplify the call to action. So phone number, email, Facebook, there's three different calls to actions, not even including the actual call to action of the ad. So I would simplify it, switch it to one, which is usually going to be the objective of your ad anyway. I'd switch it to the one call to action to make it easier for people to know what the next steps are. As for the creative, I think a collage is really good with Christmas lights because you can show multiple services or multiple variations. But I think this collage could look a lot better. It doesn't look very professional. It looks like it was made on Microsoft Word. So if you go to canva.com, there's a ton of collages, pre-made templates that you could just use and add in your images. Something like that is going to look a lot more professional than something as simple as this. So you can use these same images, just change the structure to look a little bit better and a bit more professional. And then you can also see one of these images actually shows a gutter cleaning and the creative even mentions gutter cleaning, but the ad copy itself says nothing about gutter cleaning. So it's not very congruent and you want the ad copy and the creative as well as the lead form in every step in your process to be congruent and on the same page. So I would say to either add that in your ad copy as well, or just remove it completely, but a way you can incorporate it. And it looks like this might work well for you because you don't even have an offer on your ad is offering a free gutter cleaning with the light installation services. This way you can incorporate the fact that you offer these services and use it as an incentive to get more customers. As for the headline and the button, if you're running messenger ads, then having the button say send message is fine. But to be honest, I don't recommend running messenger ads because what tends to happen is people click it by accident. They technically become a lead and then you try to reach back out to them. You begin offering your services to them and you never hear from them again. Whereas with something like a Facebook lead form, people have to fill out their information and submit it. So if they don't do that, they're not a lead. So you're not wasting time with them. And if they do do that, then they're actually interested. There's some intent behind them filling out their information. So now you can text them, you can email them, call them, you have their property, you can send out marketing materials through the house. But now you'll have a much better chance of actually getting in contact with them. And then as for the headline, I think it's wasted by just having the business name there. Your business name already appears up here. So the headline should be some type of offer or call to action. So for example, if you begin offering that free gutter cleaning deal I mentioned, you could say free gutter cleaning with your holiday light installation or something that you could do for the people that do play the low ticket game, which again, I don't recommend that. And we don't run this for any of our clients. But if you did want to play the lower ticket game, maybe it's your first season and you're just looking to do a lot of volume lower ticket, you could mention starting price at XYZ, whatever that number is. One of the people we reviewed is $500. So you could say Christmas light installation starting at $500. And then I typically like to add an emoji to like a finger or an arrow pointing at the button. So people know exactly where to click to begin the process. Looks like this is another video ad. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. So this is actually a still image, but they threw on some music and that Santa Claus in the bottom right corner just to make it more engaging. This is actually a strategy we do and it works really well with some of our clients, but it's a lot simpler than what they have going on. They have a lot of text. So it's going to be very hard for someone to read through this pretty quickly. Some of this information should be in the ad copy, not the creative itself. So it's hard to see, which means if I can't see it on my laptop, then people on their phone definitely can't see this. But it looks like they have a phone number, email, maybe a website down here. So once again, too many call to actions, and it's just taking up real estate on the creative for no reason, because you really can't see it anyway. And then being that it is white text, a lot of it is pretty hard to read. For example, where it says award winning, you can barely see the word award or some of this other 
clear text, again, is a little hard to read with that background. If you're going to use a white text, you're going to want a darker background than red because red is still pretty light. So I'd either use different colored text or you can add like a shadow overlay to make the text pop a bit more. But you also want to keep in mind by removing some of the unnecessary text, like all this down here, award winning this right here, because that's mentioned in the ad copy. You can also make the pictures larger so people can actually see them better as opposed to this being already a small image on their phone. Now it's even smaller by being this tiny image inside of that image. So this person's running a carousel ad, which we've tested and we've never really seen great results with them, not compared to just an image or just a video. So this is something you can definitely test out, but you're usually going to want to just stick to one image or one video on an ad. They did a good job with the ad copy because it's line by line. So it's easier for someone to skim through this and get all the major points of information, but there's no emojis. So I definitely add some emojis to make it a bit more engaging, specifically as the bullet point instead of these dashes. And then typically in that that first line as well, just to make it more engaging. As for the creatives themselves, it's not too bad. It looks like they might be using Canva actually for the templates, which is great, but you want to make sure what you're showing is a service you're actually providing. And it's something that people actually want. So looking at something like this in this video, it looks pretty basic, pretty realistic. So I'm sure a lot of homeowners want that. But the house in image number one, in this image or this image, most people are not looking for something that extravagant or they can already tell that's something outside of their budget. And so they're not interested in that. So because of that, they might just scroll past and not pay attention to the ad. So make sure you're actually using your own content and services you've actually done. That way people can see what you can realistically do for them. Moving on to this ad, first and foremost, today is November 1st when I'm recording this. And right now it says October, so that definitely needs to be changed. As for the ad copy itself, again, really short, but in some markets, usually less sophisticated markets, this still works well. So if you're running something like this and it's working, then great. 90% of the time it won't though. So you'll need to implement a bit more to it and you can go off the feedback that I've mentioned earlier. And then same feedback for the Creative. There's a lot of text here that could have just been in the ad copy. And that text is also taking up real estate, which is covering the house. So you can barely even see the house in this image. As for this ad, I like the fact that they threw in the emojis and, and they have spacing between each line to make it way more digestible. The only issue is it's a bit long. So I'd work on shortening this. So it's less information that someone has to digest while they're trying to read this. And then I also like the fact that they have the call to action as a last line, which as I mentioned earlier, you should definitely have your call to action as a last line, but I think they should make it a bit more specific so someone knows exactly what they need to do to book now. So for example, someone that is interested, if they see this and it says book now and secure your spot, they don't know if they need to go to your website, they need to click the book now button, if they need to go to your Facebook page. So to make it as simple as possible, tell them exactly what to do, even include the caption on the button so they know exactly where they need to press. And then as for the rest of the creative, I think it looks pretty good, very festive with the ornaments and the green background. The examples of the houses look good too. I definitely know this is not an installation they did, so I don't know if they should really be using that image but let's just say hypothetically they did do that house and this collage looks really good. Moving on to this ad and you guys are going to notice I'm giving a lot of the same feedback on a lot of these ads. This one actually looks really good. It has really good information, but it's just so bulky that most people cannot digest this within just a few seconds, which is what most people want to do. So I would separate all these sentences line by line to make it very easy to skim through. But as for the actual ad copy and the verbiage being used, it's really good and it starts off talking about the service and the benefit of the service. It moves on to talking about what exactly is included. And then it finishes with a call to action. I think the headline is good too. And the button is great. It says get quote. My only other feedback would be on the image is a lot of text. The houses itself look good and they take up most of the creative, which is actually really great but all that text is just unnecessary because it's already in the ad copy. And then once again, we're throwing in more call to action. So they're sharing a website, they're showing a phone number. So I definitely remove most, if not all of this text and just keep that text in the ad copy itself. It looks like this is actually being ran by the same advertiser. And this is a way better creative. This actually looks really good. It's very festive with the red and green text. It has four different houses being displayed, showing the different services that can be provided. My only feedback here would be getting rid of the logo. There's two logos in this image and that's on top of the one that's already shown here connected to their page. So anyone looking at this is seeing three logos, which really is not necessary. I wouldn't even include the logo in the image, to be honest. But if you want to use it just for branding purposes, I would use it once. Definitely not any more than that.
So this is a really great ad. I love video ads like this that make you stand out but because there's very few other advertisers, especially in your area that are going to have ads like this. Now I have a few recommendations to make the video better. Number one, like I mentioned earlier, not running horizontal videos, but instead making a square or taller dimensions. Aside from that, having something a bit more engaging in that first one to two seconds, the concept of the video is already really good. But if you can do something in that first one to two seconds to really capture someone's attention, like someone falling off a ladder, someone being tangled up in the lights or anything else that really captures someone's attention, I think that'll do a much better job at capturing their attention that first one to two seconds. So they keep watching. And then as for the rest of the video, I think it already does a good job at retaining that attention. It's just capturing that attention in the first place. And then my only other feedback for the video itself would be to show more clips of the house once the lights are up. You could really only see the house with the lights for a split second. So for someone watching this, the main goal is to see what you can do for them. Now, obviously you're showing the type of problem they may face and that you provide a solution for that, but they also want to see, they want to visualize what their house could look like. And this video doesn't really do that. So I think it should include more clips of the house itself once the lights are up. But aside from that, I love the video, love the concept, the quality of the video is really good plus the voiceover sounds great so overall i think it's really good and then the ad copy itself looks really great as well once again the hashtags are kind of useless so it's just taking up unnecessary real estate but as for everything else it looks good they have a clear call to action at the end and that call to action is actually congruent with the objective and the button on the ad now my only feedback would be to not run call ads because same thing as i mentioned with messenger you get a lot of people that click the button, hang up immediately, and then that's considered a lead when they really aren't. I think you'll get much better conversions running lead forms, but that'd be all my feedback for this ad. That's all the ads that I'll be reviewing for today. But the last bit of feedback I wanna leave you guys with is test out as many different ad variations as possible. So we saw variations of really short ad copy, longer ad copy, images, videos, collages, a lot of different variations. And the thing is in different markets, different variations work better than others. And you won't know what works in your market until you test it. So when you're actually building out an ad campaign, don't just run one ad and that's it. You should have multiple ads with different ad copy variations, different headlines, different images, different videos, split test as much as possible. And then what you're gonna notice is some ads perform better than others. The ones that don't perform as well, just turn off and then continue split testing the ones that do perform well. So for example, let's just say you have one image that's doing really well. You can now take that image, run it again, but with a new ad copy, and then you can see which ad copy variation performs better than the other. And then once you find a winner there, you shut off the loser, you keep running the winner, and now you split test that with a different headline or a different audience. There's so many ways you can go about it, but if you're not testing out different ad variations, then you're probably spending way more money per lead than you really need to be. I hope this video is valuable to you guys. If you're personally running Facebook ads for your Christmas light installation business, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below to actually book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. And on this call, I'll check out your ads. I'll give you some feedback. And if you're interested in having me personally run your ads for you, then we can use that call to talk about what that partnership would look like. Once again, you can find the link to book a call with me in the description of this video. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.